Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is March 25th, 1938, and the title is Revenge for Mendoza. Hope you enjoy. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. untamed west of yesteryear lives once again as the famous masked rider of justice takes us down the danger trails of old for another of his stirring adventure stories. Listen to those silver shod hoofs as they race over the hard packed roadbeds of long ago. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! That's it, old fellow! We're riding the Texas trails today! We're in the Silver! And Tato's waiting for us in the trail ahead! I know Greenville, Texas, had been terrorized by a band of hard-riding, hooded outlaws. The lawmen were unable to cope with the situation, for the raiders would always strike where they were least expected. Rich sources of loot were passed up, and though the riders would plunder and rob, they never took the life of any of their victims. As our story begins, we see the outlaws mounting and turning their horses away from the home of Maggie and Hank Trumpet. Get them! There they go! Can't see to shoot. Get the horses. Head after him. Oh, Hank, Hank, they took everything. Everything that you and me had set by for our old age. There, there now, Maggie. <laughs> after all, they left us alive. Oh. That's something to be grateful for. <laughs> What's the good of being alive now? There ain't nothing ahead for us but starvation. Try and buck up, Mrs. Crumpart. Maybe the men will capture those raiders. There ain't a chance of that, Betsy. Them raiders have horses that are too fast for any of our men to catch. No rat at all, anyhow. That's six times they've raided someone around Greenville. What's the matter with the law around here? Cleaned out. Everything gone. Oh, Hank, what'll we do now? Now, don't you worry, honey. I'll take care of you somehow. You're too old a man to do any more work, Hank. You slaved all your life to get the savings them crooks stole. The folks around Greenville won't see you go hungry, Mrs. Crumpart. Oh. Not try and bear it. Oh, charity. We'll have to live on charity. The lawman might overtake them, Maggie. They won't. Even if they do get close, them raiders will just shoot them down. I wouldn't say that. It's a curious thing about them hooded men. They don't hanker to kill. They never killed anyone yet, have they? Not as I know of. They did. They did so. They killed poor Zeke. They got him tonight. They did? Is is Zeke Lucas dead? Of course he is. One moment. Oh, yes, man. 
Another of them, I'll... Ready there. Don't reach for the gun. Got me covered, huh? Oh, Hank, Hank, don't fight him. Please listen to me. This one's come back to get anything the others overlooked like is not. No, I'm not one of the outlaws. Who, who are you then? Why, you met? I'm here for information about the raiders who just left here. Well, I've heard about that band of outlaws. But they seem to strike no place else but here in Greenville. Well, they come here plenty frequent. Have they ever attacked a bank, a store, or an express office? Not as far as we know. Always a private home. Isn't that the case? Yeah. But who are you? They always pick on old folks like the Crumparts here. They ain't the nerve to stack up against real gunmen that could defend themselves a might. They rob the most substantial citizens of Greenville, don't they? Yes, they do. They cleaned out my folks the first time they come here. Then... Then after Rob and Betsy's father, they robbed Clem Burbank, then Dave Ostrom. Let me ask another question. A half-breed named Manuel Mendoza was captured and hanged here, wasn't he? Yeah. I recollect that ornery breed. I was on the jury that sent him to swing for murder. And who else was on that jury? Now, let me see. There was Clem Burbank. One of the men who had been robbed. That's so, come to think of it. My father was on that jury. And he was robbed. Oh, sakes alive, Hank, come to think of it. Dave Olstrom was on the jury, too. Remember? Yeah, and he was robbed. By Juniper, everyone that has been robbed by them critters was on that jury that swung Mendoza. That's the point I wanted to know. Here, Silver. But who are you, mister? Are you here? Yep. We'll meet again. Thanks for the information. Wait, hold on, stranger. Hail Silver! How are you? The quickly formed posse that rode out after the hooded outlaws had raided Hank Crumpart's home soon lost sight of the fleeing bandits. Once the raiders found safety in the hills bordering the Rio Grande, they seemed to disappear, and the posse abandoned the chase. <laughs> Ain't no use to go no farther. We lost the track of them completely. I'd give a heap to know what sort of horses those crooks ride. And I'd give every dime I got to see that leader and see him swing the same as that other cook we caught. Mendoza? That's who. Ah, oh, they get out of sight easy with them black horses and black clothes they wear. But I've seen one thing. Hey, what's that? The leader is mighty undersized. Hey, there's another rider right heading this way. You hear him? Yeah, I hear the horse coming. Flame fast, too, if you ask me. As fast as those black outlaw horses. Come on, old fellow. There he comes. That white horse. Look. And there he goes. Great guns. Look at that horse travel. Yes, there ain't no chance for us to catch that night riding bunch. But if ever the horse was born that could catch him, it's that one that just passed us. Look at him run. The Lone Ranger urged the great horse Silver onward through the night to join his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, in their camp. Meanwhile, the band of hooded riders plunged into the shallow waters of the Rio Grande. <laughs> Beyond the border, they continued their swift pace. But with the first light of dawn, they reached their destination. It was a rancho, many miles from the scene of their raid. The tired riders dismounted from their black horses, but the leader remained in the saddle. A quick jester removed both hat and hood and revealed an attractive girl. Who has brought the money? Put it over there and then stand back in line. I have something to say to you all. Be quick. She's very angry. What is wrong? Now, hear me. I have given the most strict order that no one is to be shot dead. Why was I disobeyed? Senorita Mendoza. Speak. Are you the one who shot to kill? No, no, senorita. It was not me. I want only to say it was dark. No one knows whose bullet brought death. A man was killed by one of our bullets. That is all I know. I do not want pigs and murderers to follow me. Who fired that bullet? I ask again. Who fired to kill? I will have the truth. Quick. Senorita. I am the one. You will stand there, Pedro. The rest of you will go to your places until again I summon you. I did not mean to take the life. It was a mistake. You will pay the penalty. I have sworn that each one of the jury that condemned my father would pay for the outrage. Not with life, no, with money. I explained to each one who swore to ride with me that there would be no death. 
I made each one of you take that place. Si, I know, senorita. I... I go now to the house table. You have a gun in your belt. Si, senorita. I give you five minutes alone, Pedro. Si. <gasps> Really have the courage. He, he did have the courage. Oh, Padre, Padre. Send me the courage to carry on until I have avenged the terrible wrong done to you. <laughs> The Lone Ranger's ride on his great horse, Silver, brought him at last to his camp. Tonto was waiting for him. And when the masked man told his faithful companion what had happened earlier that night, the Indian said, Me no Manuel Mendoza. There could be no other purpose in these raids, Kimosabe, than to injure the people who sent him to the hangman's tree. Not right. Six men have been visited and robbed by these night riders. We maybe catch raiders next time. We want the leader, Kimosabe. Uh. If we capture the men, the leader would have a new organization built in no time. The only people who have been attacked are those who were on the jury that convicted Manuel Mendoza. There are still six who have not been attacked. One of those six will be next. Mm, that's right. We go to Greenville and watch for those raiders. Their horse, plenty fast. But none as fast as silver. Hello. We are heading for Greenville. and Tonto rode to a spot near Greenville, and each day the mystery rider disguised himself and entered town to gather what information he could. In the meantime, the townspeople had recognized the fact that only those who had served on the Mendoza jury were being attacked. We hear Hank and Ma- uh, Maggie Crumpart speaking. Maggie, there are sure six worried men in Greenville. I, I reckon the whole town's worried, Hank. It must be true that some friend of Mendoza's doing this to get even with the Mendoza jury. Can't imagine anyone being friends with a dirty killer like Mendoza was. I know. It ain't right that you should lose everything and be broke at your age just because you served on a jury. I, uh, I was talking to Betsy today, Maggie. She said maybe she'd drop over this evening and talk to you a while. Bless the girl. She's real sweet. She sure is. Finest girl around here. Well, that's likely her now. Betsy, I'm that glad to see you. Come on in. Hello, Mrs. Crumpart. I was just talking to Sig Selkirk. He seemed to think he'll be the next to be attacked by the night raiders. Well, what makes him think that? Well, he was figuring it out and found that the first man attacked and robbed was the first chosen for the jury. Yeah? Next man was the second man chosen. And I was the sixth juror and the sixth to be robbed. And Sig Selkirk's the seventh. Yeah? We're learning things about these raiders. They got a definite scheme, all right. It's revenge they're after. Sig said if only he had some idea how they'd attack, he'd be ready for them. You can't be ready. They seem to know just when a fellow will least expect an attack. Why don't Sig hide his money? It is hidden. That's another thing he's afraid of. What? That that they'll maybe torture him or his wife till they learn where it is. Gosh, I, I wouldn't put it past him at that. Oh, no, Maggie, Betsy, what is that? A rider outside the house. I remember that voice. Let me look. He's riding a white horse. He must have heard what we said about Sig. Oh, what should we do now? We, we've got to warn Sig. Tell him to light out of town, Hank. It's the only safe thing to do. Can't tell if that masked man's in cahoots with the raiders or not. I'll go tell Sig. You stay here. Oh, an engine. What are you doing here? You stay in house. You stay here. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. You will recall that in the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama, a band of hooded riders carried out a series of daring raids in the Greenville Territory. The Lone Ranger discovered that these raids were directed against those who had sentenced the half-breed Mendoza to death. As our next scene opens, we hear the door of Selkirk's house burst open, and then the commanding voice of the Lone Ranger. Don't move, Selkirk. Uh, what? I'll be coming. Uh, mess and alone. <laughs> Slick, ain't you? Figured we'd be watching for your whole band. Were you? Yes, I was. Thought you'd fool me by coming here alone this time, eh? Well, my cash ain't here. I know it isn't. You, you know? Hey, you don't talk like a half-breed. I'm not. And you're big. I thought your bunch was breeds and the leaders was pint size. You're right, Sig. Some of the outlaws are breeds, and the leader is small in size. But I'm not one of the band. You ain't. I'm here to help you. Those outlaws will be coming just as you suppose, and I'm hoping to see their leader. <laughs> Slim chance of it. He's too blame slick. I want to follow the band and learn where their hiding place is. It'll be easier than following the faint trail they leave. Can't follow them. Why? They got the fastest horses around here. I'll match my horse with theirs. <laughs> That's good, and match your horse with theirs. That's what I said. I want your help, Selkirk. Well, I ain't falling for no tricks. It said that they're the slickest crooks alive. And this is likely just one more trick to get me to show where my cash is hid. I'm afraid when I tell you what I want you to do, you'll be even more convinced that it's a trick. What's that? I want you to give the outlaws your cash when they come. Yeah? Yes. So that's the scheme. Pose as a friend of mine, out to help me. Get me to agree to let them crooks have my cash so you can follow them and locate their hideout. Why, dead wretcher, I see through that scheme. But you're wrong. I need your help if we're to find the other money that's been stolen. Well, you don't get it. <laughs> Tell me such a yarn and think I'll fall for it. Tell me your horse can outrun them others. It can, it will. You won't have no chance of keeping the pace with him, even if you're on the level. I haven't time to waste with you, Selkirk. I'll show you my horse and you can judge for yourself. Come outside. I won't. Come on. Let go my arm. Outside. Stop dragging me. Here, Silver. Silver. There's the horse I spoke of. Land sakes alive. The size of it. Are you going to help me or not? Silver. You call that horse Silver. That's my horse's name. Masked. Tall. That voice. That horse. Great gun, stranger. Listen. The Raiders! The Raiders is coming! They're coming. Are you helping me or not? Uh, helping you? You bet your life I am. Who is they that wouldn't help the Lone Ranger? Good enough. Tonight we'll tell the tale. I'll be waiting. Yep. Come on, Silver! The raiders, their hoods lashed close about their faces, charged down on Selkirk's home. They swiftly surrounded the building while one of their number dismounted and ran inside. I'll make no move, senor. I'll be... Well, shoot. So it's my turn, eh? You know what we're here for. Make it fast. The money. My money, eh? Capriste. Ain't no use trying to bluff you. The cash is in that flour sack in the corner. Well, I'll take a look. You stand still. It's there all right enough. I see it. Good. I'll take this sack and all. Now, look here. Can't you leave me a little cash for myself? No. No, we go. <laughs> you make number seven. There will be others, senor. We return again pronto. Oh, but, but listen, won't you let me... No. You have it? Si, senorita. To the saddle, then, and ride. Si, senorita. Oh, hey, they got my cash, boys. Boys, get them. They got all my cash. No, sell, Kirk and Trina. There they go. Ain't no horse alive to get them. Where's the law? There ain't no law where that man is concerned. Oh, wait, boys. There's a law, and there's a horse to get him. Hey, oh, hey, oh. And there he goes. The Lone Ranger mounted on Silver raced after the outlaws. Carita and her men soon knew they were being followed. The hooded riders were mounted on the finest horses in that region. But they were no match for the great horse Silver. They urged their mounts to their fastest speed. But soon they heard the Lone Ranger's ringing shout. Hey! We must go faster. We cannot. The rail, it is just the hill. Beyond, we may be safe. Faster, faster. There is but one way, Carita. We must shoot him. No. It is the only way. We must shoot him to stop him. I will have no mercy. Ride, ride for the Rio Grande. The fugitives reached the Rio Grande and sent their horses splashing through its water. <laughs> Over the 
Once more on firm ground, the Lone Ranger finally overtook Carita and her band. Silver plunged past the outlaws and drew up to Carita's horse. Stop your horse! Stop! Stop! I want to speak to you! Let me go! I shoot! Get back! I'm watching every one of you! Let go! Let go! You're going to ride with me! No! no. We shoot! No, no! Not shoot him! You're riding in my saddle! Stop! Stop! Let me go! A girl! Let me go! The rest of you keep back! I know Silver! Away! We're going to ride ahead of your friends! And the lot I'm going to say to you. No, let me go. Let me go, I tell you. Struggling won't help you. Come on, Silver. The outlaws dared not fire at the Lone Ranger for fear of hitting Carita. Their mounts could not possibly overtake Silver, and they were forced to permit the masked man to carry away their leader. They continued, nevertheless, toward their headquarters. The Lone Ranger and Carita had arrived before them. We hear the girl speaking. I understand, senor. But now, my men, they have returned. They had no place else to go? No. Are you convinced of the truth in what I've told you? With the proof you offer, I have no choice. I've made so great a mistake. One man is dead. See? Si. But believe me, amigo, you killed as paid and fool. I do believe you, senorita. My name is Carita. We must start back at dawn, if you're still willing to go back. I have given my word. The sooner you return to Texas, the sooner there'll be happiness where there's been misery. Say my name. Senorita Mendoza. No, no. My name, Carita. Carita, will you speak to your men? My father, in happier days before he, he became what you told me, would say... Carissima, Carita. You know what that means in your language. Ben, stand back from that horse. Senorita Mendoza will speak to you. You can't. Quiet! You hear what I say? At dawn, we return to Texas. We take back with us all that which we have stolen. We go without the hood. We go unmarked. We face jail. We face death as your father, our master. We face Texas justice with our faces unmasked. My vigilantes, I have heard new things of Texas law. It means we have failed. Our work is not finished. Our work is done, Jose. We face jail. We hang like thieves. We put faith and trust in the stranger who stands beside me. I have spoken. We ride at dawn. <laughs> The Lone Ranger made the return trip to Greenville alone. Outside town, he met Tonto, who told him that everyone in town knew the masked man had persuaded Selkirk to give up his money to the hooded riders. The following morning, when the Lone Ranger entered town, he was greeted by a crowd of shouting men. Where's the cash? Did you get it? Lead us to the hideout. Did you locate the thieves? Wait! Listen to me! People of Greenville, these night raiders were led by a girl. <laughs> The daughter of Manuel Mendoza, whom you sentenced to death some time ago. She's made a terrible mistake and wishes to correct it. Her orders to the men who followed her were that no one was to be seriously harmed. Zeke was killed, and the man who shot him paid for it with his life. Hey, look yonder. There she comes. The raider's coming again. Please, don't open fire on them. I gave them my word that you'd let the girl speak before you judged her and her men. Keep cunning leather. That girl wants only to see justice done. We ought to drill a lot. Of They're coming to return your money. Let the girl speak. Hey, folks, let her have a chance. Amigo, you have told these people. They will listen to you, Carita. Good. People, I have made the great mistake. I could not think my father was so wrong. He sent me a message just before he paid for his crimes, telling me of injustice that was done him. He beseeched me to take the men who worked for us at the rancho and come to seek vengeance on those who passed judgment on him. I could not kill or have killed. I gave order only to rob. That man has told me the truth. I've learned that my father was 
not what I wanted to think of him. I have learned that your American justice is a good justice. That my father was a bad man, deserving of what punishment he got. That is why I come now to bring back not only what was taken, but but twice as much to repay for the injuries you have suffered. I I ask peace and the chance to return home. The girl has thrown herself on your mercy. She's convinced that your American justice is fair. She surrenders to you. I say we should let the poor girl go. Gosh, she ain't had no easy time of it. Fellas, I feel that every one of us has sometime or other done something we were sorry for. And the one big thing about the West is that a person can get a second chance here. Any, anyone that wants a second chance to do right can have it, for all of me. Let the girl go back to her home. The man that says she can't has me to deal with. Sakes alive, I'd likely have done the same thing. Oh, amigo. Senor. Senora. I thank you. Come on, Silver. Now, let's get back to our own places and let them folks from below the border do the same. All right, Detective. Take this girl to bring back Dear miss, you plum plumb it out. Before you start back for home, come to our place and refresh yourself. You, you people, you are so good. I thank you. See, miss, let me ask you just one thing. See? Just how could this masked man convince you that you was wrong about your paw and that he was telling you the truth? You, senor, perhaps would not understand. The heck I wouldn't. Just tell me. He... He took me in his arms. He held me on his horse. He was so grand, so brave, so strong. Yeah, but what did he do to prove that... I knew, senor, he told the truth because, you see, I... I admired him, so I... I trusted him. I... I loved him. Him. And that's all that it took to convince you? Si, senor. Well, I'll be doggone. I can't savvy women. Come on there, silver old boy. We're on the trail of bank thieves. I know silver. Away. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share-like copyright. 
For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.